have notes. I didn't write anything down, but I'm getting a little old. Put the mic by your mic. Yeah, we, we can't hear you. What? <laughs> Do you want me to hold the paper? <laughs> so the uh, last time I spoke a tribute to my dad. Oh yeah, and by the way, all dates are give or take 20 years here. <laughs> all the places might be the wrong places. You just don't remember things well. But the last time I recall giving an oral tribute to my dad was on a video for his 70th birthday when they were in South Africa. And we each made our short little two or three minute video and I think Dave combined them. And mine was, I, <clears throat> I went back country skiing by myself on a beautiful snowy morning, got to the top of the Surfer LP, set up the camera and, and gave a speech talking about outdoor activities and the, that connection. But unfortunately when dad saw it, all he noticed was the timestamp at the bottom, and that it was Sunday. <laughs> so, as I was thinking about today, I did go back and tree skiing today, but on a Saturday. And as I was walking up Bear Trap Four, going toward the Wasatch Crest, I really, looking across the way of solitude, it just reminded me one more time um, of one of the many legacies that he has given us. And that one legacy is one, to take care of your body, and two, a love for the outdoors. I don't think when he grew up, he had a lot of outdoor or sports opportunities, as far as I know. He taught himself how to ski as an adult, taught each of the seven kids how to ski, and then they taught almost all of the grandkids. And that's been a great legacy. And again, he even continued skiing with us until he was 75 years old. He, as far as I know, learned how to backpack and hike as an adult on his own or with friends. And again, the Tippinogas hikes, the, New York, the July 4th hikes, Bald Mountain, it's all part of that legacy he's given us. He taught himself how to fish but I think what ended up happening was all he did was cast for the kids and then untangle their lines and then cast again. So he didn't fully get into fishing because of us, but certainly some of us have carried that on. He learned how to mountain bike as an adult. And as many of you know, Todd, right? Dad and I rode the Wasatch Crest when dad was in his mid 60s. And as he ran into a friend and we were talking, we realized that he was basically twice my age and three times Todd's age at the time. Now the, the event that surprised all of us is when <coughs> about 20 years ago, when Dave and I bought our boat, we went water skiing as the boys and dad just kind of came along for the ride. And after we had all water skied and surfed or whatever, he's like, what well, can I get in? Mm -hmm. We're like, well, you don't know how to water ski. <laughs> he's got in the water, got up, and went around Echo Reservoir. Who we got? It was 72. It was 72. <laughs> <laughs> so the fact that we're celebrating his 90th birthday and that he's alive, he's able to drive, he's able to walk, is not surprising at all because of the way he's taken care of himself and enjoyed the outdoors and cared for himself. The second legacy that Rich vaguely mentioned is his commitment to developing his mind and working hard. And I think we all have heard various parts of the story that he grew up in Logan, got a scholarship to Columbia, you know, earned his way through Columbia, working summers, working, you know, holidays. Um, turned down Stanford Law School to go to Berkeley Law School. Um, all of that takes hard work. All of that takes intelligence. But when he graduated, well, First of all, 
He worked for 40 years, almost, oh at the God. same law firm. That is 70,000 billable hours. <laughs> <laughs> it's a painful hour and a half. <laughs> so, you know, part of our legacy was knowing our dad was working hard, providing for us so that we could have the opportunity. In addition to working really hard at a job, you know, he was always building shelves, moving furniture up in the attic, <coughs> doing sprinklers. All, you know, I think for 30 years he didn't sit down. Except for this. But um, always a model of hard work. But from an education perspective, he also didn't quit with school. He continued to go to, you know, he would audit art history classes where he supposedly wrote the best paper the teacher had ever seen. <laughs> Which he didn't have to write, but he wanted to. He um, was involved with study groups. He was visiting last week and there was a book about Jerusalem on his desk. And I thought maybe he was looking up something for Gaza or whatever. He said, no, I was just, you know, updating my research on Jerusalem. <laughs> so again, continuing to learn, continuing to, to grow. Absolutely a wonderful legacy for us. Um, this birthday party is connected to the other thing he's given to us, which is he has created opportunities for his family to have opportunities and be together. You know, when we're young, his children, we saw our mom a lot more. And even when we gathered over the years, she's often the one with the microphone or, or the bell or whatever it is. But the person who, you know, put the camper on, drove the camper, parked it, got the shots all leveled up so that we could go across the country to the East Coast or go to Yellowstone, that was always dead. When we <coughs> went to the cottage farm where a lot of us have these wonderful memories, he managed the cottage farm for over 20 years so that we could have the memories. For, I, I wrote it down somewhere, I think 40 years? No. About 30 years we've been having pool parties at their house. Somebody's cleaning that pool, maintaining it, putting the cover on, taking the cover off, um, wearing the grass, mowing the grass, weeding that enormous yard. Once we left, because we just weeded the yard. <laughs> yeah, and again, that's dad. 35 years. 35 years of pool parties. That is dad creating a space so that we could be together, we could enjoy each other, and come together as a family. And, and I will say it is wonderful to be able to, you know, not only know my siblings and their spouses, but, you know, to spend so much time with nieces and nephews and even some of their spouses and children over the years. That's been a great gift that he has been a big part of. And finally, at those pool parties, I always got a big hug and a question, how was your week? How was your trip? And I think most of us experience that. That sort of interpersonal caring and warmth has just been a great part of his life. Yeah. Final thing is he's always been someone who did the right thing. He's always kind, decent, and respectful. He never swore, never was his voice. He was always taught to us about congruence, doing, living according to your values. And as far as I can tell, he always did. What if I only witnessed this was in the last decade, where he spent day after day sitting in a chair talking to my mom, often having the same conversation over and over again. <laughs> And as we learned when he got COVID, he was waking up with her at night. He was doing a lot of the household duties. Uh, he never complained, at least to me. He never complained, he always had a smile on his face. Um, he left a lot of legacies, many of which I haven't mentioned, but none is more meaningful and impressive 
that how we love is supportive and care for us and his children. So happy birthday. Look forward to your 110 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs>